yourself at home. I, I've called the meeting to order, so. <laughs> it's going to anyway, be one of those nights. Uh, is there anybody out here that would like to talk at the public or the open forum? Anyone? If not, we'll move ahead. Uh, approval of the agenda. John, is there anything you'd like to add? No, sir. Uh, Lyle? No. Pete? No. Julie? No. No, Mr. Mayor. Neil? Bob? No. Nope. And Jenny? I'd like to remove item F under new business. Uh, cassette agenda. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes and the claims for the month? Is this all the claims? Yes. No. It didn't seem like it. There was another. Barb attendance. emailed the other one yeah. to you. Yeah. Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Can get those. Yeah. No, I got it. I was, I, never mind. Are there any questions? If not, I'll entertain the motion. So moved. Motion made by Lyle. Second. Second by Bob. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. On the public hearings, we are going to go to uh, work for bit. Resolution 2017-04. And Brian, you have the floor. Um, good evening. I'm not sure. I mailed a letter out to Jenny on Friday. I'm not sure if that got in your packet or not. They have it tonight. Okay. Um, so I guess in my opinion, it was a pretty good day on Friday. We had uh, 13 total bids came in for the project. Um, I think the last project we had six, if I believe, if I met my memory is correct. It was six or eight. Um, so basically, out of the 13 bids, Holt Meyer Construction came in with the lowest well, let me back up. So we bid the project as both a base bid and then, and then we had an additive alternate for whether or not, you know, we would receive PFA funding. Um, basically, the, the additive part would be to meet the requirements of the, of the PFA contractors packet, the big things would be that they'd have to buy American steel and uh, pay prevailing wages. So those are kind of like the big things. So that's why it's an additive, additive cost. Um, so... <clears throat> So that's how we bid it. We bid it as a base bid and then the alternate, and then, um, which is kind of interesting because I've never bid a project that way. Um, but being that they didn't get a bonding bill passed, we wanted to have the option for the PFA funding. Um, <clears throat> so as the bids came in, Holtmeyer was the low bid for both the base bid and the alternate. Their base bid came in at $1.04 million approximately and um, about 60000 additional for... Um, or excuse me, 65000 additional for the PFA funding for the alternate, um, which I thought was really good because considering that this project is about lineal foot-wise about 25% longer than the 2015 project, their base bid basically came at almost exactly the same price as the uh, 2015 project. So, so I, in my opinion, it's really favorable bids, at least when you compare it to the 2015 project. Um, and then after the bids came in, um, I sent a summary to um, Shannon, to take a look at the numbers and then he um, issued a letter today and I'm not sure if if you guys have received that as well That's in there. that just came today mm -hmm. um, so um, and Shannon will be here next month at the meeting to discuss the starting the bonding process oh, okay. right so um, I'm not, I don't really necessarily want to speak for Shannon but if I, if I understand his letter correctly you know based on his assumptions if the PFA funding were to become available you would save approximately, or you'd save approximately sixty thousand, but then the additional cost for it is sixty-five thousand, and that would be assuming that you would award the project as as the alternate right away. If if you were to try to go back later on 
and uh, maybe do it as a change order, then it, there'd probably be additional cost, you know, if you're to do it after the project had already started. Um, if, if I'm understanding his letter correctly. And he'll explain so. that more. This is just mm -hmm. for your information. But do we need to, no, we don't need to know that to accept a bid tonight. No. Right. Um, so I guess, I guess the way I see it, there's, there's some options there. Um, as far as how we set up the bids, they're required to hold their prices for 60 days. Um, you know, most contractors don't really like to do that because a lot of their suppliers will say, well, you know, we're only going to give you prices for 30 days, so, you know, some of their stuff might change. But uh, what I think you could do, and, and, and not that you'd have to necessarily award the contract right away, but um, at some point within that 60 days, you'd, you'd have to make the decision on if you'd want to go the alternate route and hold out for PFA funding um, or not, I guess. But the one thing you'd need to do is if, let's say, they don't get anything passed until May, and you had moved forward with the base bid, let's say. Um, if you wanted to go back later on, you would have had to have purchased basically the American-made steel, basically, which is mostly for the water main and stuff. So, um, so I guess what I'm getting at here is if, if you think you, you might want to pursue PFA funding, even if it doesn't get approved till May, you'd most likely have to order, have them order American-made steel products um, in order to meet the requirements if you were to pursue that funding later on. So that would be the, kind of the really big, the only thing that would really be kind of get kind of sticky would be the American made steel stuff and then you'd have to go back and. And there's no guarantee we'd even get the PFA funding. No, no. So I guess, yeah, talking with the PFA, um, the lady at the PFA, she didn't sound, I, I don't know, it, it didn't sound too good in her mind, I guess, that anything would happen before the, the end of the session, so like maybe middle of May, end of May, and she thought even if even if they do make funding available for the PFA, she wasn't sure if they would hold that funding just for the 2018 list or if it would be made avail available for any 2017 projects. So it's kind of, there's a lot of ifs out there, I guess, basically. But, uh, well, we have to make a decision before then. You would have to make a decision for awarding the contract, like I say, they have to hold their prices for 60 days, um, and then any time after that 60 days, they, their alternate price basically wouldn't, they wouldn't have to hold that, so that more, more than likely after that, it would probably go up, I'd imagine, if you wanted to so use PFA funding. You're more about that from Shannon next month? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we know anything about Holtmeyer Construction? Yep, they do quite a bit of work, yep, they're, uh, yeah, they do. On our paving, did a good job for us yep. last year. Yep, and they actually have MR listed as a sub. I know yep. Joel Holtmeyer, the owner, pretty well. My dad actually worked for him for about 10 years. Okay. And I think Joe is one of the most honest, um, yep. outstanding men I have ever met. I would. Yep. One thing they did, they did call me prior to bidding, and they would like to bring a, a what, crusher. crusher into town and have it down by the empty lot by the railroad tracks to crush tar from the pavement. And I told him if they were awarded the bid, I would get him our noise ordinance information, and I would talk to the lodge about it. To I don't anticipate this being an issue. They would do it for about two weeks, is what he told me. Um, but just that be aware if they do, that would be something they would like to do. And Mark and I did talk about if maybe putting them out in the industrial park too. So yeah, I would think there'd be a lot of dust with that crush. Yeah. But, well, I mean, just so you're aware that that mm. is a conversation where we've Maybe been a having less, with them. A lot less intrusive out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Less yeah. yeah, we've done, I mean, multiple, multiple projects with them. And, and they're out of where? Mankato. Mankato. Mm -hmm. And then they do actually, as, as one of their subs, they did have MR listed, so I assume they'll be using them for the, for the paving and things. So MR will still be around for the project. <coughs> so. Does that seem like a large uh, difference in price? Um, as far as between our, our estimate, um, well, th those are a little deceiving too, maybe between the high and low because the, the last two you'll see, I think they misunderstood how to bid it, you know, that they, they didn't do their alt or their bid as an alternate. They, <coughs> they, ex they basically bid it as two separate projects, which it was, uh, I made it fairly clear that it was an additive alternate. I even issued it an, an addendum. Excuse me, that was, you know, basically to clarify it even more, but somehow that got missed. So, so those last two, those are kind of outliers because they didn't bid it 
the way they really the way they were supposed to. Um, yeah. So if you look at the, the you know down like they're one point one point six five, um, you know, really when you look at it, it's really not that big of a spread once you get, for the alternates, anyways. Um, so I, I guess I'd, it's our, our estimate was maybe kind of towards the higher end of the middle, but I guess like I said, it, I think we got really good, really good prices for for the low bids based based on the 2015 project. Your recommendation is low. Yes. Yep. I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, coal-fired construction. And Mr. Mayor. Yes. You at the same time, I would just uh, approve resolution 2017-04. Okay, so to accept the low bid and also the resolution. So moved. Motion made. Second. Seconded. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Now, proceed to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say aye. <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you, Brian. Okay, thank you. I'll get you a copy of that resolution tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, so uh, if we vote for Holtmeyer tonight, that's it. Yeah. We're going with that. Okay. Well, it would just it would just be a matter of deciding if you're going with the PFA and Shannon can mm -hmm. explain that more next month. That's great price. I mean, that's yeah. the price mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I'm sure the property owners will be also. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's take a look at the um, police officer wages. Did everybody get that in there? The um. Yeah, the bargaining or yeah, bargaining, the bargaining, bargaining committee yeah. met mm -hmm. with Chief Johnson and um, came to an agreement on wages for the for Kenny and Zach, who are no longer in the police union. Um, they Kenny and Zach agreed to these wages um, along with the triple time for holiday pay, which they were currently being paid under the police contract. And so this is your recommendation. And, and there is a typo, which is my bad, on after, therefore, be it resolved on number one. I was meaning to say 2017, and apparently I went back in time to <laughs> 207. <laughs> oh, so I'll get a new one for you, for you to sign, Kelly. <laughs> Carry the one. <laughs> And, and one of the ideas behind this is we want our um, officers to be paid competitively, so so we're not a stepping stone that we, uh, you know, we hope that they can they and, stay here. And this would be retroactive to January 1st. Yes. Since I was on the committee um, that negotiated that, I'm going to accept resolution number 2017, number 5, regarding the setting police officer wages. We have a motion made to accept the uh, police officer wages, resolution 2017-05. There is a second to that. I'll second it. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? If not, proceed to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, if anyone wants to go ahead and talk about the Larry Anderson purchase agreement. All right, Don, do you need to? I can do it. That's potato, right. potato. I don't need a copy of that. What? The um, Larry Anderson. Oh, yeah. I didn't. It, yeah. It, the purchase agreement in itself isn't in the packet, but yeah. it doesn't need to be. Because the city council uh, about a year and a half ago now approved a purchase agreement with Larry Anderson that basically set out a timetable where we would purchase his uh, property and take possession of it, and it was geared towards him finding another place. So he contacted Jenny uh, recently and said that he found uh, a place to move to and he would like to get this uh, finalized. So uh, we put together a time frame. The, the one uh, curveball to this is he, would, he needs the money for the house about two months in advance of actually moving because he's going to use that money to buy the new house. Sure. So the timeline that 
in the game plan that we're thinking of, which we're asking for your approval, is at the end of February, uh, me, Jenny, and Larry will meet. At that time, the city will give Larry the check for purchasing the property. At that time, he will sign title of the property over to the city. And then we'll have a side, written side agreement that allows him to still be in possession of the property until the end of April. Uh, we expect that he will be moved out about mid-April, but we'll just say the end of April just to give him time to get everything taken care of. So that's how we're wanting to proceed, if you're okay with that. So He's anticipating closing on his home the first part of March. So liability-wise, if he gets hurt on the property, that's going to be covered in the agreement? And yeah, we'll cover all that. So. Gotcha. I can't recollect, but what are we paying him for the property? Sixty-five thousand. He's 65. been given five thousand already, and then we'll be giving him <coughs> okay. the sixty thousand. Okay. Where and I don't remember, but where do the funds for that come from? Where's the sixty thousand come from? We have reserves for that that we okay. can borrow from, and then when we sell the property, we'll pay okay. it back. And that goes back into the reserves. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions? Mm -hmm. Not. I'll entertain a motion to uh, go ahead and. Uh, Purchase the, uh, Exercise the option. Exercise the option. Yeah. Purchase. Purchase. So moved. Motion made. Second. A second. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? If not, proceed to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I have one question. Yes. What are we going to do with the property after we buy it? Knock it down. Hopefully, I mean, it is the industrial park. So the idea is to be prepared if somebody did come in. Uh, I'm assuming the house will be removed uh, one way or another. We might relocate it yeah, to it a different property. It or it could be to another. Mm -hmm. But you never know when somebody comes that, that might have some interest out there. So the, house, the house doesn't even sit on his property <laughs> so it's kind of an odd situation <laughs> he owns a piece of land so but his house is sitting yard. on our land sure. so sure. it's yeah it's a little it's odd a, yeah. <laughs> really odd okay all right we're gonna move on city county uh library <clears throat> Uh, Roxy met with me last year, and Julie probably knows about as much about this as I do, or more maybe. Um, they've agreed, and we've agreed as a city, now well, until, not until the agreement is finalized, but the, our allocation for the library in Winthrop, we will turn over to the county. Instead of the county paying some of the staff and some of the bills, and the city paying some of the staff and some of the bills, it'll just, we'll turn our allocation over to the county as a two-time-a-year payment, and they will pay all of the staff, they will pay all of the bills, and it'll just be a much cleaner accounting practice. A lot of it came from, well, <laughs> there's a long history. We've been doing this for a little over 20 years as Sibley County Library System on our own, <clears throat> and the commissioners always give us an allocation from the county, and then the cities also kick in, and everybody was doing it differently. Winthrop paid most of their bills through the city, and then you know the county picked up their portion. Henderson wanted nothing to do with it. The county auditor's office, um, who handles all the billing for the library system, would pay all of that. It gave the auditors and um, the state librarian nightmares when they would look at our annual report. Well, how come this is done this way, and how come this doesn't match, and you know why? Why does the city do it that way? And um, so, it, and, and it will be really nice to have all of the um, employees be employees of the Sibley County Library System as opposed to this person is employed by the city of Henderson and this person is employed by the city of Gibbon and so it, it will be much. And cleaner. we'll be able to drop our work comp on the librarians, so. Is and, and we can, um, the county has always been very good to the library system and provided all those um, financial services to pay all our bills and everything and and this kind of solidified all of that so um, it's it's a good thing for the library system too Jenny you alluded to we could drop the 
the work comp side of it mm -hmm. is that not, that's not in the allocation what we're setting up side no it would, it's not okay mm -hmm. so it would be a savings yes I yeah know. I know what, what that a couple is. hundred bucks yeah. All right, so we need a motion. Is there any downfall to this? Has anybody seen I any mean, downfall to this where we lose control? Or yeah, I'm just asking, what's approach. what's the downside? You know, I, I don't think so because we still, as a city, whoever, I mean, future city councils will set whatever amount Winthrop wants to contribute and, and also still has control of we allocate X number of dollars toward books and X number of dollars toward hours and that's itemized but in that agreement I'm talking about but yeah but I'm talking about control of the hours of the well and the nice thing is it's not the, the you never had any have nothing to do with this it's the Sibley County Library okay. Board and you always have a representative okay. from um, Winthrop on that board um, I I don't think that they I don't think there would be an okay. issue with that that's just they're pretty we're, happy to get the city we're totally in charge of the Completely. employers and I mean, the employees. library board. They're the employees library. of the library, library, library board, board, not the city. Yeah. yeah. We'll mm -hmm. Still be able to do that. But. Yes, and the library board has always hired um, the directors in each mm -hmm. library. Um, and probably what we'll do, I'm not even 100% sure, depending on the level of hire, um, it will probably be up to the library director to hire. So, for example, here in Winthrop, if Mandy needed a part time person, she would handle advertising and interviewing. And if she wanted assistance, I'm sure somebody from the library system would help. So right. primarily, this is just a ease of accounting solution. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Okay. And okay. it's very nice. Winthrop has always supported the library. <coughs> library. I agree. The library as a whole is appreciative. <laughs> I think we've got one of the better libraries in the county. Julie, did this used to be part of the Minnesota Valley? Yes. library system many years ago and not anymore they, yeah they dissolved anymore. yeah it doesn't exist okay. anymore library system sorry fell apart. no it, i'm not familiar question. with it yeah and then when that fell apart then they established the sibley county <clears throat> library system as it is today which oh. has been a really good thing for the libraries in sibley county well that one was kind of like a brouhaha between oh, <laughs> we won't get into something like that here no no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no i mean you never know our library directors yeah. get along very well they work well together i had well to together. live with my mother and, during those and this years if gibbon has a good part-time library person it will be easier for them to yeah, fill in yeah. some hours here in winthrop or go over to gaylord yeah. um, because there won't be that well i'm an employee here and you're mm -hmm. an employee there yeah. so, so one of that i think it's really good so administratively policy is going to be set by the yes yes not, none of that changes we're just going to do a pass-through yeah. entity like we do with yeah, with and franchise yes, yes exactly Saves a little time yeah. in the office here too well, lots of time that, yep. um, Jenny and Barb don't have to deal with yes. billing. Okay. And and Mandy's agreeable to it also. So Good. yes. Mock soul. So well, since that's my area, I will move that we. Have a motion made. <laughs> second. And second to accept the uh, Sibley County Library agreement. Is there any further discussion? Ready for the discussion. <coughs> now proceed to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Oh, we got to do E yet. The historical preservation <laughs> policy. Oh. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at that? That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I just go yes, ahead? Yes, yeah. yeah. So I, this uh, came out about uh, 3.30. So it's a policy that just, I'll just read it. It says, the city council <laughs> of the city of Winthrop hereby declares as a matter of public policy that the preservation, protection, promotion, and use of building structures and lands having a special historical community or aesthetic interest or value as a public necessity and is required in the interest and welfare of the community. Accordingly, the city of Winthrop will consult with the Winthrop Historical Society before selling or purchasing land in the community. And I mean, what this basically stems from is there was, uh, with the Historical Society and others, had a desire to at least start the process of trying to protect some of our historic, historical buildings uh, in the city. Now, there are different ways to do that. 
one way is you could create a historical preservation commission, which would be a whole another governmental entity with people who would have bylaws and meetings and have all these policies. Or you can do the baby step uh, route of just starting to consult with our historians before the city does something. So we had a meeting with myself, Jenny, the mayor was present, uh, the Historical Society, and we just discussed that and it was just determined that that would be a good start is before we purchase or sell property and we just talk with them and see if there's any issues or concerns and at least starts the process of taking that sort of stuff into consideration. There's a question out there? I do. Yes, sir. Why, why would the Historical Society be interested or have any kind of a consultation on a piece of property we were going to buy for the industrial park what what does that have to do with mm -hmm. and i'm not saying it's bad i, I don't i don't see the uh, the connection anytime we buy or to sell land i mean we might buy land that's for an economic development person mm -hmm. that has to do with historical significance exactly why would we why would we have to go to them first i think if we I, I i agree with mr erickson and i think the simple solution here that'll because you bring up a very valid point sir is that that word consult should be informed well, well, no, I, I think we are consulting. Yeah, yeah consulting is not see, binding. See, my, my answer to that would just be it's, it's not anything binding. We just we sit down and say, hey, we're thinking of buying and purchasing this land. Do you have any historical issues? And if it's an industrial park situation, they're probably not going to have. And if they do, so what? Why wouldn't you want to listen if they have some sort That's of... That's exactly yeah. my feeling. I think it would relieve some of the... Um, some of the past problems that we have had, where we go ahead and we do something uh, without, I just think it's a good idea to have that input in from the historical society. Is there any historical significance? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I understand it with buildings. Yeah. That I understand completely. But, right. it's, but, it's, but it says land. I mean, I mean, if it's a bare piece of land, why, why would the city council have to consult with the Windsor Historical Society before exactly. they decided to buy or sell a piece of land? Buildings, yes, that I understand com mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only answer that I would give to that is maybe they would know something that we don't about that piece of land. I, I don't see it as that big of a deal. I mean, it's just talking, but you, you keep. You have the ability to make it however you want. If you just want it to be buildings, well, that's fine. Buildings were, would be my intention, mm -hmm. would be buildings. The, the land on the other side, I guess, I had Unless there was an Indian mound under it or something like that. <laughs> that's, um, protected, Mayor, that's protected federally and state. I, a lot of us have been around here for a long time. How many buildings are historical to Winthrop right now? I have no well, idea. We don't know. Not many. Anything. We don't know. Well, that, that's all. It's a matter of perspective, uh, really. Opinion, yes. I mean, also, a matter of who owns well, it. Well, 10 years, 10 years ago. Anything over 50, that's federal. What's that? All depends, Bob. If you ask my kids, something from the 60s might be historical to them. You know, it, it is a matter of perspective. <laughs> Take a look that's at the armory. The armory is anything, anything federally owned over 50. Yeah. Touch it. Uh, Kelly, the reserves in '69. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and I bring this up not to stop it or anything, but to, so the EDA is thinking about purchasing a piece of property, and we kind of like to do it in camera, kind of within our own little purview. You don't want people to know that you're interested in property for development, but then we have to go to the historical society first and, and inform them that we're thinking of buying this piece of property. Well, in some respects, the uh, cat's out of the bag. I mean, if we wanted to do something, not secretly, but something within our EDA, we'd have to go to more. them first. And no, see, I don't, I don't see that as requiring that you do that first. If you just go, I think you could okay. you do your negotiations and then when it gets to the point where you actually have to approve it in a public meeting anyway, you could do that consulting before. I don't think you have to do that. Part of the planning stages. Well, tell me this, Mr. Erickson, how do they do it in, all the, uh, in so many other towns where they do actually have a historical preservation society? There's no, there's no authority that they hold. It's just a no, no, no. And I and I don't want to. I don't mean to throw cold water in this. I don't know. They they have uh, some of the larger cities have historical districts and they have historical commissions and they've designated certain areas and certain 
and certain buildings as historical preservation. And when those buildings get touched, then yeah, then. And Euler just started a historical preservation district with the, with the Understood. commission. And, yeah, and then that's more, you know, it, one thing is we're trying to work with and cooperate with this historical society yeah. rather than going with that onerous yeah. spot. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's that hard just to talk to people. No, I, I'm not. I'm not. I just want to be clear on pr procedure that we don't yeah. that we don't tie our hands here. Yeah, well, my, I, my answer, he's right. The, the, minute, the minute you stop the cats out of the bag, the bidding will start. It could. It could. But, but again, to purchase it, you have to do it in a public meeting anyway. I know so, that. Uh, True. I don't see that as being an issue because if you get to the point where you're going to purchase, it's going to be open. So you can do that right before you put it to your board. Could we find out, I mean, since there are other cities similar in size or scope to Winthrop, could we find out how theirs is worded if it if theirs applies They have to more in-depth policies. Land? Like yeah. Gaylord has a whole okay. historic preservation. Oh, goodness. See, th right. this is the most simplest thing exactly. that you yeah. can do. Right, well, right. I understand and, that. And that's what I would like to keep it simple, too. Yeah. You can't get any simpler. Yeah, my, so I understand. Anybody, anybody right. else that does anything is much more complicated. Because again, all this says is you're going to talk to them. Mm -hmm. um, if you get anything more specific, it's going to be rules and guidelines, and they're going to have meetings and meetings and. Well, and one question I have is, you know, I how know. It I thought we were on our way looking at purchasing something. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. How you're right, many, Mark. I get it. How I'm many next. people do you, representatives next. do you have to have? Do they have to get six people together? Do they have to get a dozen? Do they have to just have two? Mm -hmm. The historical society. Yeah, I think they will. I, I think. Historical Society. I, I, I would. We'd have to find out about that. But I thought they were going to designate a, a certain group that would be the group that would be looking. Which seems reasonable to me. I mean, I would just hope that they would be able to address something quickly and not say, "Well, yeah. we only meet on the fourth right. Thursday yeah, when right. there's a full moon, <laughs> and we missed it." Yeah. No, we would have to tell them we're working under a timeline, and we need to meet within the next week, and and. If you can get a group of people together, you know, I, that's how I see it working. So, so say I had a house built in 1869 and it's just a complete You mean disaster. we're going to knock it down, right? Disaster. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I say, I've got a buyer. They can stop that? I'm going no, 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 it's not, not saying that. It's just the city. Just the city. This just says that you're just going to consult with them. It doesn't give them any authority. It's just, right. hey, what do you think? So it's just asking so, for So Okay, so they say, oh, we should save that. So that well, happen. if it's a private sale, Pete, that's a private sale. This is just the city purchasing. Right. Yeah. Pete, most of those houses are gone already. <laughs> One right here in the corner? Yeah. yeah. But there is a house like that that the city wants, and they feel there is something historically significant about it. I think maybe the city should take another look at it. I agree with that. Or even artifacts is. within the home that they would want, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But I feel strongly that, that we should have something like this to help represent. Uh, the, the last time, I, and that's fine, I have a problem with it, I guess. The last time we started, we actually took members of the community who were interested in preserving a house that was going to be torn down and took them into it and showed them mm -hmm. the issues with it, and they just said, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous, we should save it. And it was completely unrealistic. And that's but the that's when the fight started, down. right? Right. Um, but then you have a, well, yeah, so why are you asking us if you're not going to listen to us? So why are you asking us if you're not going to listen to us? <laughs> kind of a. Okay. I I'll be quiet now. I don't think we're putting a lot of teeth in. What's that? I don't think we're putting a lot of teeth. No, we're not. We're really not putting any teeth. Yeah. <laughs> we could we write can do whatever we want. at the back and there'd be teeth in that third party taking a look at it and yeah, it's just a piece of the right thing. thing. Yeah. I like it. Or it's not right, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I feel more comfortable. It also gives the community a little more input. As long as we got this can of worms open, <laughs> uh, does Mr. Lenoy how, know how the armory is going or? Have we put in a bid or are they? It's going to go for up for auction in the spring. Yes, okay. they're going to have an open house. They're going to let people come in and see it. Um, we are more than welcome to put in a bid for whatever you would have seen fit at that point. It's not going to be anywhere near the 
$250,000 that they wanted us to buy it. Well, after they left that window open for four years, there's yeah. so much floor tile up. My concern is we were going to move that True. monument. They were going to donate that. Yeah, that's, that's not. That's that's yeah. But that's going to be part of the whole deal. Right? Yeah, that's, that's a separate matter. Yeah. That's kind of a separate matter. Yeah. We'll, we'll consult with the council about what you want to do once we get an option. Yeah. Dates. But that won't be till March. So. But that monument thing is ours, isn't it? Yes. yes. Gordy's going to take care of yes. that. Yes. Yep. Are you going to be able to move that? No. no we got to get professional. Yeah. I think Schaefer's going to come and do it, aren't they? Okay, well, let's, let's take care of this before we uh, get too carried away. <laughs> come on, start again. Dale. What? <laughs> I didn't start And again, it's more to consult with our historical community. All right. And we would hope we'd be able to come to some kind of yes. consensus. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion for this. Shouldn't somebody be I'll here have, uh, from the Historical Society have to... Them. Oh, you have, okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We have a motion made. I'll second it. And second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same side. Building is the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I got to take a call. So when he gets my report, can you just put me to the end? Thank you. <laughs> I didn't I hear you. what Pete said. He said the first yeah. building's a jail. The first building, yeah, the first building's a jail. <laughs> and we're gonna pass that. One. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Okay. We will have an agreement for that next. All right. City administrator. What's your Okay, um, yeah, the agenda was messed up this month, and I apologize for that. I'll, I'll do much better next month. Um, I, we met with Katie in January. We finished up the arc flash analysis. I have the maps and the information if you want to stop and look at it. Essentially, Paul tested all of the transformers. He's got our, our whole system on a, on a computerized CAD-type system, and, and he did his processing up there and gave us a report. That report is good until we change something on the system. Then the report becomes null. But the information we have is still accurate to some extent, but we can't hang our head on it because the system's been changed. Um, we met with Kelly, Don, Bob, Kristen, and myself met with John Force and Toby Bruins on the Winthrop Ambulance Service. They would like us to serve the entire township of Mulkey. Currently, they are serve the top two rows of sections are served by Buffalo Lake. They don't have an agreement or anything with them, um, and they don't get very good response time. So right now, they are, they told dispatch to just page Winthrop out. And we are working on updating the contracts, and we'll get, when we reconfigure the percentages, we will include those two rows of sections. Everyone's in agreement with it. Um, no one had any objections to it unless you guys have any objections to it. Um, the street committee, Don Gordy and myself met with <coughs> Dean to discuss the culvert and the flooding problem on his field. The city agreed to jet out the culvert under 8th Street and fix the dent in the culvert. We will also watch the flooding in the spring and summer. There is not much more we can do at this point. Um, I'm not sure that appeased Dean you know why the water as much as he there, wanted, <laughs> but I think I we're all on the same page. Yeah. So. Uh, I attended the MMUA Legislative Conference Tuesday and Wednesday. We met with Senator Newman, Grunhagen, and Miller, and we also met with Gary Carlson to discuss the ag containment issue. It seems there's a compromise in the works, and I have attained the language and sent it to the county assessor for her input. I have not received a response yet. I told them all that we are not in favor of a compromise, and, they are still and we are still pushing for a full repeal. But now that the ag companies have had a year of no taxes, they're becoming more reluctant to pay them. I'm planning on emailing, and I was compiling the list today of all the cities that are affected and providing them their senator and representative contact information, and hopefully those other cities will put some heat on their representatives so that they understand how important this land to us is to us. I was a little disappointed in, in the lack of enthusiasm by the representatives, except for Grunhagen, to, to um, repeal. repeal this, yes. Um, we did meet with... Um, Gary and I did email him prior to this meeting he and there is a hearing this week with um, Backer and Gary and one of the lobbyists for the egg companies and he was still waiting for a time he thinks it's tomorrow but he didn't have the time yet but as soon as he knows he's gonna let me know 
and I asked him if either Kelly or I should attend that hearing and I don't know if the timing will fall in place where we can get there or not so well, call if you find out mm -hmm. they want us there, I think. yeah I'm I'm wait I'm just waiting for him to to get back to me on the time because apparently Becker has not been able to coordinate everybody else's schedules to get this meeting set up so um, let's see the audit's been started and it's going well and Dave Berg actually emailed me today to get going on the electric rate study he's going to send me a data request this week and I'll get that back to him um, and Ken is going gung-ho on the audit so we should have some good numbers for him to send him to get started on the rate study uh, the mini rods want to come back for fun fest but the street they're using they've been jumping the curb and they're afraid it's gonna something's gonna happen they're gonna end up in that guy's house so they asked if they could put it on 8th Street or on Redwood Street between the football field and the park from 8th to 5th and Gordy said that would be a fantastic idea that would be very safe to have there <laughs> but we we agreed that it would probably be better to have it there Where? on Redwood Street between 8th and 5th right. between the the track and the park oh, yeah, yeah. the football field they the, used to have it there, yes uh-huh so they why did they move it I'm not sure closer to they the they wanted to close it up yeah but they're not having the water fight I guess next summer because they usually have the water they fight there the reserve center park a lot yeah there you go <laughs> but I am going to talk to Carol Ann and Gramses and whoever's living in Ray Clinks just to let them know that yeah, that street's going to be closed and that's going to be going on for a couple hours that afternoon of Fun Fest. So, and then Joe and I met with Tim Becker with Sibley County Public Works to dis discuss the construction on First Street in front of DFA in 2019. And it sounds like we'll be able to work something out with them and more information will be coming. Um, I've also contacted MnDOT about Highway 19 construction which is tentatively planned um, for around 2025. They informed me that Highway 19 is not on their 10-year plan at this time, but they, could, they would get in touch with me in the spring and send a crew out to assess the highway. Essentially what they told me is how much money we get for Highway 19 is dependent on how close they are to actually doing a construction project. If it's two years, we'll get more money than if it's, say, five or 10 years. Um, I emailed Tim Becker after I had called, talked to MnDOT and he then came through town later that night and drove the highway and he said that it might be a good idea for them to look at it because it is at least the bad. intersection oh, yeah. it's ridiculous. Terrible. so um, that's it it's been a busy month when we gave up the stoplights we sat right over there in the meeting with MnDOT and we complained about the street and they said that will be fixed in two years yep. that was Two years yeah, ago. the the sidewalk project yeah, was supposed, supposed to be, this be year. an overlay. They, that will be fixed. It's on the schedule. I noticed bump at that intersection. You know, right on the shoulders. Yep. Yeah. We'll fall on the yep. Right. It's bad down there. Anything else, Jay? That is it. Unless you got anything for me. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we had our in our January board meeting, we elected new officers. Dave Treblehorn is the chair, uh, Doug Hansen is the vice chair, Ed Pelletier is the secretary, and Lyle is still taking the money and he's the treasurer. That, that so new car that new car you got there? Um, we are rebidding the demolition of both the Miller House and the DQ house. Uh, there was an unforeseen and unforeseen delay. In, the, in finalizing the contract for deed with ground zero and the board decided at this last meeting to just rebid it and we're just going to pay to have it just a uh, pay to have them torn down we're not going to swap land for development rights and stuff it doesn't make sense to us in some respects to work real hard to get a piece of land and then give it to somebody else for five years I mean I just don't have a, we can still we can still I, work well, with I, I can wait it's done but can we roll it up with the Christensen house should we put it off for another the Christensen month? Christensen House. Anderson? Yeah, Anderson. I'm sorry, oh. Anderson. Uh, I mean, just uh, hang on a sec. Uh, but yeah, that's not a bad, that's not a bad thought. Uh, and the next one is the, is the Larry Anderson House. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that. I haven't been inside of it, but that house would fit very nicely on this lot right over here. I don't know if the bones are any good. I, I just don't know. It, it, but if, you know, we think we might be able to move it and settle it on a foundation for fifty or $60,000, and you can sell it for that and break even and have something on the tax rolls so uh, 
Where are you thinking? Well, they're right next to Barb Johnson, between Barb Johnson and. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a. They're going to move that. Oh, because as I said, that you could sell. But they're going to move that. Well, that house should be on it. the Historical Society. That is. And that, <laughs> I, Bob? That, <laughs> Came back. No, we're just looking at the land. <laughs> so when the. So, well, you're talking about moving it over here. <laughs> no. You move the house for nothing. That house, that house is very historical. That house is over 100 years old. That's I was told. The three farmers, the three brother farmers who built the big house and the one where a Dollar General is at now, the John Wood Zone, and there was another one that was burned down like 30 or 40 years ago. The house that we are getting, the city's getting, is, is where the servants lived for for those folks. So it, it it does have some history. That's what I was told. So Dale, Miss, you know, maybe. I just, yeah, you know. It, um, I, I think they want to demo these houses pretty quick, though. So, well, I, and I we, just, we can't get it till April. It's, it's one of those trucks in the town things, you know. Right. Sorry, let me interrupt. Uh, the Bauer Building, it appears the legal wrangling's over. Um, um, and the, who, on who has authority to decide the fate of the building? I wouldn't say it's over. Well, we, it, I said it appears. I said it appears. I said it appears. <laughs> it says right there, it appears. <laughs> Um, so it'll take a few weeks, maybe uh, maybe six or seven weeks before it'll it all come around. So. Are there any immediate plans for that? Right now? No, no. We've just been working for almost two years just on getting the building. Yeah. Uh, Mark, do you know anything about the BP station? Oh, yeah. Any word? No. What's going in there? Uh, no, I know uh, that's the Windsor Opportunities piece of property. We have a, we have a meeting in the morning, and uh, they be putting in a roof on it. When they get the roof on, they're going to gut it completely, and redo the insides. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure they're going to if they don't they pave it this. Right? They had some ideas. They had ideas for a coffee shop and a pizza place and a liquor store and blah and this and that. But just talk. There's nothing. There's, there's nothing. nothing you can really find out until no. No, I think they have to fix it up and get it ready, and then uh, try and market it right. somehow. Jason has a lot of ideas. Pardon? Jason has a lot of ideas. Yeah, he's he's an idea guy. That's true. Thanks, Mark. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Don, are you ready? I'm ready, but I was just going to talk about the Bauer Building. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you could have stayed on the phone, Don. We're going to get it done. <laughs> well, is there anything? Or, um, All right. Is there anything for water, sir? No. Forty. Okay. No. I'm good. Um, electric department, is there anything there for you? Oh, oh the, the flashers, the parts are in for the crossing flasher. I emailed Bob M. Maneth from MnDOT, and I'm waiting for him to get back to me when they can come fix it. So. Uh, on the MMPA side, I don't know, did you insert? I, didn't, I did. I did. Yeah. I was saying it's to Jenny, there. I just don't have Jenny it on was given a bunch there. of information to talk with the... Uh, oh, uh, for the legislators. legislators yes, yeah. David Niles oh. was at the conference. Yeah. What's apparently happening is, as we proceed to build distributive generation to forego wheeling, now there's legislation that we can't give up wheeling entirely, though we build our own distributive generation. City of Winthrop and people who own windmills and everything will owe the feds a certain amount of tax dollars anyway. Mm -hmm. Hasn't passed yet, but. That's what's being proposed. Yeah. Wow. Pete, just, just just real quick, what was the the extra charge uh, if we wanted to go with? Is it renewable energy? Oh, green, yeah. green energy. Explain that. I have a couple okay. of people. Well, we've always it. had renewable and uh, or green energy, or green power, <clears throat> and it was sold in blocks, okay. and people really didn't understand it. And so now they're just saying is, if you want 50% green energy, you cost your dollar. If you want 75 it's two dollars and if you want 100 percent it's three dollars so how do they know that well i guess you have to take the word of the mmpa that the, the power there's, there's no separate line that comes into your house Correct. that says green yeah. the the logic the way i understand it and correct me if i'm wrong is that if don wants to buy power and he used to have to pay two or three cents more kil kilowatt to get his green power and nobody was really doing it but most people throw a buck or two bucks or three yeah. bucks at it because that's ah, just three bucks 
and it pays for the renewables. But I will say this, that I think we're about 60 or 70 percent mm -hmm. green. Yeah. Our, our co-op. Yeah. Yep. And the parts that aren't, they have these things that are called crepes, and they're like, if we don't have enough green, we go out and buy it from somebody else, so your money goes towards buying that mm -hmm. green power. Okay. So it does? Yep. Go yeah, it goes towards green power. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so is there anything from uh, fire or ambulance? I put the annual reports in. The meeting is February 16th at 7 p.m. at the ambulance station, and you are all and that invited is posted to come. as a public meeting. I haven't posted it yet, but it will but be it will posted be. as a work session. Perfect. There won't be any decisions Thank you. made. So, um, no, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's been a busy month before I get into the nuts and bolts of the new squad car I just want to share a fun fact this week this month um, January GFW schools had a uh, hero month which was the police officers and all the police officers were were invited um, to have lunch free of charge with the kiddos so um, our officers at our department and several others in the county went and handed out freezies for dessert and it was just a really great PR opportunity and no better comp no bigger compliment to a police officer than a kid that wants to have lunch with you right so <laughs> so anyways that being said it has been a busy month call wise and I also um, quoted in your packet you'll see I have quite a bit of papers this month I collected quotes for the new squad car we currently um, have the 2009 Crown Victoria and uh, 2013 Explorer the Crown Victoria has um, 101 524 for my miles and the Explorer has 62 796 um, we currently have thirty eight thousand seventy seven dollars and sixty six cents in capital reserve for the new squad car, uh, we have long done business with Chuck Spath in New Alm. So I went and I, I spoke with Al down there and obtained quotes. Um, so the 2017 Explorer came in at um, with similar options we had last time, the lighting option and, and just the camera, everything we have uh, on the current squad car, which we're very happy with, came in at $29.98 and 28 cents. And then I had him bid out a Taurus with similar options. And that came in at uh, 24, 901, and 28 cents. So that that would be the government concession, pri the, the uh, tag tag price minus government concession, which is state bid, plus uh, $150, which is mandatory by the state for uh, maintenance and it's inspection and cleanup. So that's the lowest price we're going to get. Um, in my personal opinion, I believe our our money is better spent on the SUV. I feel for the extra amount of money, you get a lot bit more car you get all-wheel drive you get higher clearance for the winter we need to keep we the squad cards get used and abused I need both squad cars in service all the time and um, we've had great just great luck with our Explorer so the officers are really happy with it also there are studies out there that SUVs result in um, fewer long-term injuries for officers knees and back and that sort of thing um, so my personal opinion is that it's a better use of the city's money and uh, um, resale on the Explorer tends to be higher right now the it's pretty comparable gas mileage the Explorer comes out at 19 city and 27 highway and the Taurus in 19 city really and 29 highway it's it's pretty amazing that it's not that much in uh, in difference and I've also um, attached for you um, for the purpose of today I was hoping to obtain your um, some discussion and possible approval for putting in an order for a squad car we really do need it. The Crown Vic is on its last legs. The uh, the one thing I was hoping to carry over from the Crown Vic was the gun locks, and those started smoking this weekend on a traffic stop. Poor Kenny thought his jacket was on fire, but um, it was the gun locks. So yeah, it's uh, it's 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 time. It's time for a. I'd like to put not not put any more money into maintenance if we could into the Crown Vic. I um, you'll see. I also did obtain some two quotes. I was hoping for three, but the gentleman is sleepy. I didn't get back to me for uh, equipment, equipment and installation. In Guardian Fleet Safety, which is the one I'm leaning towards, I'd like to go with. Uh, a lot of folks in Renville County use them. Came out at seven thousand six dollars and eight cents, and that's for that's for the uh, the installation of basically the the cage, the push bumper, 
the um, installation of the, the camera, everything that needs to be transferred over and everything we need to get a working squad car going is what it is. The, what this does not include is the graphics, which that's a Winter Police Department, which would be $500. Gordon, are you heading out? Yeah. Is there any chance you can hang around for a little bit? That's unless you have something going on. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Ahead, I'll be fast with my numbers, Corey. Okay, so graphics are $500, and we have to add another two to 300 for the gun locks that started smoking and now we can't use. So uh, around, I would say, $800. So my, my estimate, uh, hopefully, would be around $36,900 for, for everything, total, for everything, um, if all goes, goes as planned. Also, I got two bids on tearing down the old squad car which I know we don't have to worry about today, but I just wanted to just, one of them is, um, came at $420. He did not include the $80 to take off the graphics because some cities choose to just send their squad cars to the county auction right. with the graphics on it. I don't know that you would want Winthrop, you know, on the car when it goes, but that's certainly up for discussion. Um, and the other one came in at double, $1,200, which I was pretty surprised. So quite a discrepancy there. Um, so that's just explaining some of the, the paper you have in front of you. The Guardian is selling you a steel push bar, and the other one is selling you an aluminum push bumper. Yes, I know. Um, I did notice that. And, but they, oh, they both came in at around $300. Right, right. We're going to go with the steel. Right. I, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, but thank you. I think I've got your headlight problem solved, too. Yeah, well, Ford updated the, it, it was a wiring update, and also the person we were having do it wasn't putting the correct headlights in. So I got some headlights from the Ford dealer. So it was a combination, I guess, of both of those things. Okay. We've had, we've had good, ex, um, good, good luck with the, ex, <laughs> the Explorer, but for some reason we always have a headlight issue. Um, so thank you. Are GMC cars more expensive? I just noticed the state went over to GMC. Yeah, G, well, la last time I, I priced out, you know, GMC, I, they're gonna be, they're probably gonna be a little more, yeah. Last time I, uh, when we did the 2013, I priced out Chevy and Dodge as well, and Ford beat them by a country mile. But I guess I can't speak intelligently about GMC because I've never reached out to them. Ford's really meeting contracts because they want to get their vehicles out there. Yeah. Well, no, I just used to listen to some of the police officers say, oh, that Ford is the worst one we've ever had. Yeah. That's because they're Dodge so guys. If we keep buying the I've, worst ones, no, we're still buying them. I've always been happy with Ford, you know, but uh, yeah, the 2009, we put a lot of money into maintenance. For some reason, that car, I don't know why. But yeah, we haven't had many problems except for that annoying headlight with the uh, current one. Does everybody feel comfortable with the information you have? Would you like to make a decision? <laughs> Is the money there in the fund? Yep. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. Sort of yes. I'll entertain a motion then. I'll make a motion. It's a motion made by Dale. Go ahead, and that is approving for the per purchase, purchase the, the vehicle. Yes. Yep. When we get the car, then she'll get some tighter numbers on the installation, and we okay. can stick around. I'll second that. There's a second. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Buy a car. <laughs> thank you. Is get there a, anything else here? No, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Get a thank pretty you. yellow hey, one. Hey, Roll Homer. I hope not. Anything on the cable commission? Just anything the report, the, the minutes. Board? Yeah. And then you all have an act on Alzheimer's survey. We met. Um, that on the radio. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Ah. Turn that over. Fill it out and turn it back to me, and I will get that to Amy. Hopefully we'll see everybody at uh, February 16th, maybe? Yes. Yeah. And then there's just yep. Cherry Treat Day is the 20th, if you guys want to. And please take a couple of moments to fill out your contact information. We just want to make got, sure we have the most updated. I think I got all of them, but Pete. There's the graphics. That are beautiful. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Nothing. Just to say that the graphics um, I don't see any more business here. What do we all get for Cherry Treat Day if we? You get a cherry <laughs> treat, <laughs> and ice cream, and coffee, oh, or milk for a buck. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> we don't take jokes. Get brownies. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I was going to get one last year, and there was a line all the way out. And then the they ran out. They ran out. And they ran out. So. Yeah, I could only have three. We'll <laughs> <laughs> so, so be careful there, man. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if there's no further business. So move. Motion made. Second. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign.
Motion carries. Thank you. If we get graphics, like this in the side of the squad card. Yeah, this take longer. This is that is. So. Yes. No. Thanks. Mark. Yeah, I know. Oh, Alzheimer's. Yeah, but we're it's going to do one of those, like, $100 bills. Oh, yeah. Gold. And then some. Oh,